Hey everyone, I'm Alex with the Signal RGB team, and today I'm building in the new O11 Vision case that Lee and Lee sent to us. If you don't know yet, we just partnered with Lee and Lee to improve Signal RGB control across all of their products. This build is to celebrate the partnership between Lee and Lee and Signal RGB. We'll also be bringing this build to trade shows like PAX West and PAX East. If you're there, be sure to stop by and say hi. Before we start, I just want to say that I haven't seen any reviews on this case yet, so everything you're going to hear me say is my actual first impression. The O11 Vision appears very similar to the O11 Dynamic, with the most noticeable difference being that the top panel is made of glass. You might be concerned about this affecting airflow, but I really don't think that's going to be a problem for most people. It also looks like you can mount two fans to the back of the case instead of one, if you use Lee and Lee's own uni fans, which means you can still have a total of eight fans. The first thing I'll do is remove all of the panels, starting with the top panel held in place by two thumb screws. Then a single thumb screw holds this side panel in place. After that, you just have to pull out and slide the panel up. Unlike the previous model, this front glass panel looks like it's not meant to be removed. So that leaves the back panel, which just pops off without having to unscrew anything. Nice. Flip open this panel to reveal the box of essential screws and zip ties. I also really like this reusable plastic box instead of the cardboard that's included with every other PC case. I'll definitely be storing some extra screws in here. This panel also comes off if you pull it up. I'm also going to remove the hard drive bays. Each one is held on by a single thumb screw, and then you just pull up and out. What I'm definitely starting to notice is how easy everything is about this case. Nothing is hard to remove, and I haven't had to use a screwdriver for anything so far. Alright, now with everything removed from the case, let's get the power supply ready to install. You always want to attach the cables you're going to need first before mounting your power supply. It's just easier that way. The power supply I'm using here is the Superflower ARGB power supply. It should look nice with the RGB fan shining through the back of the case. Now it's time to put the power supply in. Immediately what I noticed here is that there's this little stand for the power supply, so you don't have to hold it up while you're screwing it in. It's this little quality of life stuff that really makes a PC case good in my opinion. But if you think that's nice, wait until you see this next super innovative feature that just absolutely blew my mind. If you remove this screw, and then these other three screws, this entire area where you mount the motherboard and graphics card literally comes out. What the actual f Big props to Lee and Lee for thinking of this feature. I'm really impressed. The motherboard going in this build was kindly sent to us by ASUS. It's the Strix Z790E, which I'm pairing with a 13900 processor. I always suggest keeping this lid just in case you want to sell your motherboard later and protect the pins. If you don't know this already, there's a little triangle on your processor and on the lid that you match up so that you know you're putting it in correctly. But either way, every motherboard has these little notches that makes it almost impossible to mess it up. If you have only two sticks of RAM like I do, then be sure to put it in slots 2 and 4 for the best performance. Make sure you line up the notch and press down until you hear a click. Don't press too hard or you're going to end up like this. Next, I'm going to install the SSD. These nicer motherboards all have heat sinks for the SSD, so let's unscrew that. Always make sure you remove the plastic film on the thermal pad. Then just line up the SSD push it in and push it down. Nicer motherboards like this also include the standoff for the SSD and a little clip to hold the SSD down. Just rotate the clip so it's over the SSD and you're done. There's no screwdriver needed. Now I'll put the motherboard on the plate. I've never mounted a motherboard in this way before. It's really a new experience and it feels easier than reaching inside of the PC case to screw it in. After securing it, I realized I forgot to peel the plastic off the I.O. shield. So I had to remove it just to do that. Alright, now with that out of the way, it's time to put this whole thing back into the case. This was super easy. 
You just have to line it up so it sits without falling and then tighten this thumb screw. Then you can let go of it and tighten the other three thumb screws. And that's it, it's secured. At this point in every build, I like to connect all of the cables to the motherboard, starting with the main ones like the 8 pin and 24 pin cables. If you don't like thinking super hard about cable management, then you're gonna love this case. There's a ton of room here. It includes this little area to run the cables through, and it also has cable ties in all of the right places. After connecting all the essentials, I like to tuck away these other cables and I'll pull them out when I need them later throughout the build. Next up I prepared the AIO with three Lian Li Uni fans. It's worth noting that as of this video, the default Lian Li controllers still lag with signal RGB, so I'll be using an adapter from Airgu to connect the fans to a 5 volt ARGB header. This lagging issue is one of the issues we're hoping to resolve now that we're collaborating with Lian Li. So hopefully if you're watching this video in the future, you won't be needing an adapter cable, and Lian Li will have improved their controllers to better support signal RGB. Yet another awesome feature of this case, there's a quick release latch that holds this tray in place, so you can easily take it out to screw in your fans, or in this case, the AIO. Then when it's ready, just slide the tray in from the bottom first, and then the top clicks into place. Now with the AIO mounted, I'll move on to the three fans at the bottom, which will be the thermal take swall fans. This tray comes off with two screws and then you can flip it over and mount your fans to it. This works great because I can have these fan blades reversed to pull air into the case while still having the RGB face up. After they're screwed in, flip it over again, push the cables through and reattach the tray. Like I said earlier, you can have two fans on the back if you use Lian Li's Uni fans. However, I want to have a third brand here to really demonstrate Signal RGB's ability to sync everything together. So I'm adding a Corsair QL fan here. That will be three different RGB fan controllers that Signal RGB will be syncing together. I'll also show the configuration for that at the end of the video. Now I'm going to plug in all of the controllers and wire everything. I have this USB expansion hub that's going to make it easy to plug in all of the RGB controllers and also the Aces AIO. First I connected the thermal take controller plugged in the three SWA fans, and bundled up the cables as best as I could to strap them with the cable tie. They really give you a lot of extra cable with these fans, and it's kind of a nightmare. After that, I connected the Corsair controller and the one QL fan. Finally, I connected the Razer ARGB controller, which will be controlling the Superflower power supply and the three Uni fans. Now for the last part, the graphics card. I'm using a very nice looking Asus Strix card. Alright, so when you first load up Signal RGB, you should be seeing 
this neon shift effect and it should be working on all of the components and devices that are supported. So here I have my keyboard, my mouse, my mouse pad, all of the fans, the RAM, the graphics card, that cooler and the motherboard. So all of it is compatible. And what we need to do now is we need to configure our devices. So to do that, we're gonna to go to this devices tab and I'll start with the Razer ARGB controller. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that in all of these channels, there's already a strip that's been pre-created. And this is here by default so that your devices can at least show you something so that you're sure that your devices are working. Um, if this wasn't here, then your devices would look like they're off and this used to confuse a lot of people into thinking that their devices weren't supported. So we started adding these default strips here um, just to give you something when you first load the app. Um, but what we're gonna do is we'll just delete all of these strips. All right, so here you can see that the devices are pulsing based on where they're plugged in. So you can see here that on channel one, that's where our Lian Li fans are plugged in because it's pulsing red. So here I'm gonna add three, three Lian Li Uni fans. So they're the Lian Li SL120s. So I'm gonna add three of these. One, two, and three. And so now you can see they're completely synced and that top half that used to be um, not working is now working because before the strip was only 40 LEDs and now we have three fans and that's 48 LEDs. So it's covering all three fans now. All right, so channel two over here, um, I know that this is my power supply. You can't see it because it's behind the PC. It's on the back over there. Um, but I do know that it has eight LEDs and we don't have a component for the super flower, but you can still pick um, anything circular. So like uh, this cooler one stealth CPU fan should work just fine because it's eight LEDs in a circle. Okay, so now the Razer ARGB controller is all configured. Now we can do the Corsair controller. This one's pretty easy. Uh, I'll just delete this default strip here um, and you can see it's pulsing red. So that's clearly what we have connected here. Um, it's the Corsair QL. All right, so that's done. Um, that leaves us with the thermal tape controller. We'll delete all of these strips. This is channel one, this is channel two, and this is channel three. It doesn't really matter since they're all the same fan, but you know, let's just say they were different. Um, it would be nice to know, you know, which model is on which channel. But in this case, um, they're all the swap fans, so. Okay, now all of our fans, um, they're all configured now. All right, so now with all of that configured, um, we can move on to layouts. And this is where it's gonna require a little bit more tweaking. You don't necessarily have to do this because you could still run effect without having layouts configured and they'll, they're gonna look okay, right? But it looks the best when you have everything sequential in my opinion. Um, but you know, if, you, if you're too lazy to configure it, it still looks pretty decent. I hope some of you found this video useful and thanks for watching.